Hi, everybody. Um, because I wasn't able to be with you in class today, we had a, a few loose ends to tie up about um, some of the West in the World reading that we didn't get to on um, Wednesday that I wanted to make sure I, I at least just offered some thoughts on. So moving out of sort of the first part of that reading that talked about the effects of the Protestant Reformation, uh, we're turning to um, some, some elements that are really going to continue to shape the imagination of, 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 of people in Europe, uh, people around the world, really, for, for the next several centuries. And that's, you know, what we're broadly kind of calling the, the age of exploration um, and, you know, the age of encounter, uh, the encounter of, of people's um, in, in the, the quote unquote new world um, with, with those from, from Europe. So we'll be talking somewhat about that in the next, over the next few weeks about um, some of the things that uh, emerged, some of the, the good things and, and some of the bad things that emerged from this age of exploration and age of encounter. Uh, but to start with, we want to just talk a little bit about what, what motivated this. You know, what is it about, um, what is it about exploration that really captured the imagination and really, um, you know, compelled uh, European explorers and the, the, the kingdoms that sponsored them to, uh, to embark on these, these expeditions. Um, and there are a number of, there are a number of possible, um, you know, conclusions to reach here, a number of possible factors that we want to look at. Um, certainly curiosity, um, as your book talks about, uh, for centuries, you know, there had been exploration happening to, to places in the East, for example, and to Africa, um, and uh, accounts of these expeditions, um, often fanciful accounts, um, were, were, would make their way back, um, you know, under, understandings of, of other worlds that weren't entirely accurate, but that only served to pique the imagination of those who wanted to go and see for themselves. So you had accounts of, of strange creatures, strange uh, races of people living in these these other places that were, you know, um, superhuman uh, figures or um, other than human figures, things like cyclops and cyopods and and these these strange creatures that um, people thought were living out there beyond the beyond the borders of the world they knew and they wanted to go see it. Um, you also had just simply a desire to to make a name for. Uh, for themselves, right? I mean, um, explorers like anyone else are, are human beings who want to leave their mark. And uh, the adventure of, of setting out and discovering something new and uh, maybe getting to name it or getting to claim it at least um, was was a lot for people to, uh, to uh, it was really too hard for some people to resist. Um, there was often a religious motivation to exploration. As we'll see, um, the church often went uh, right alongside with the explorers um, and would often use it to um, establish churches, establish outposts uh, for missionary activity. Um, and so there, there was a missionary um, component to it. Um, as we'll see, sometimes this worked out well, sometimes um, not so well. Um, but finally, you know, perhaps the most important factor was, um, was economic. Um, a desire for goods from other places, particularly a desire for luxury goods from the East, things like silk, pottery, jewels, and especially spices. Um, it's really hard for us to overstate the importance of spices to people in Europe. But, and I think it's because we take it for granted, right? If we want, uh, if we want to season our food, uh, if we're cooking and we want to put cinnamon in our food or pepper um, or even you know, something as simple as that, um, you know, what do we do? We go to our spice rack, we go to our, our kitchen cabinet. Um, if we're out, we run to the, you know, the nearest Kroger and pick up, you know, for a couple of bucks, we pick up a, uh, a little jar of spices. Um, imagine living in a world where those things were not easily accessible, where you basically had salt. Um, and that was, that was about it. Um, and so when spices from the East, um, you know, not just things like cinnamon and pepper, but things like cloves and saffron and um, coriander and some of these really interesting spices made their way into uh, people's diets, uh, they wanted more. Um, and so these, these goods became um, much in demand and there was definitely a market for them. Um, now, that doesn't mean that uh, that these trips to the east were easy. As I said, there were a lot of misunderstandings about the people, um, about the land itself. This is a, 
um, a depiction of um, Ptolemy's map, uh, which was one um, sort of geographical, um, I guess one geographical tool that people had, but also uh, maybe a geographical obstacle. It was an inaccurate map. Um, it depicted only three continents, two oceans, um, and it made sailors think that their journey to the east would be much shorter than it actually was. Um, you know, this, this map, which was an ancient map um, that was rediscovered in the 15th century, um, depicted oceans covering about 25% of the Earth's surface, depicted the Earth as about one-sixth of its actual size. So you could understand how, um, how a um, map like this could, could certainly get some explorers into trouble. But fortunately for, for them, um, some new tools were on the way to help, uh, to help aid in their, um, in their journeys. Um, some of those tools were measuring tools, um, help, you know, like the quadrant that helped sailors determine latitude. Um, the astrolabe would measure the height of the sun during the day or stars at night and help, help determine position. Um, there were much more accurate maps that were being produced. Um, ships, uh, like uh, in, in ships from China, but also Portuguese ships uh, were faster and more durable and aided in exploration. And so because of this, you have a number of explorers that really emerge onto the scene, um, such as uh, Columbus, of course, one of, the, one of the more famous ones that we know. Uh, he was sponsored by Ferdinand and Isabella, and uh, he embarked on a westward journey in search of Asia. Asia. He wanted to find a, a, west, uh, a western passage um, to the Indies. Um, instead, he landed on an island in the Caribbean Sea, uh, the island that today we would call Hispaniola, or it's, um, it's where Haiti and the Dominican Republic are today. Um, and he claimed ownership of the land for Spain. Um, he thought he was in Asia, but of course we know he wasn't. He was in, in you know, uh, our, our part of the world, North America. Um, later explorers would prove him wrong. Um, other other explorers um, like um, Vasco da Gama, Bartholomew Diaz, um, and others um, all tried to make it to India. Um, Henry the Navigator uh, was Portuguese. Bartholomew Diaz also Portuguese. Vasco da Gama also Portuguese. Um, they all they all tried to make it to um, to India in uh, by going around Africa. So whereas Columbus went west, uh, they went south. Um, and Vasco da Gama actually did. Um, he made it to India. He returned to Spain with a wealth of spices um, and opened up trade uh, between India and, and, um, and Europe, um, trading gunpowder um, in particular um, for, uh, for spices and other things. Um, and of course, this has a, a marked impact on India because not only are they, you know, trading spices, but they're receiving gunpowder. It's going to shape the way that they um, engage in conflict for uh, generations to come. Um, as Catholic, uh, as Catholic, Spanish, and Portuguese explorers um, all sought to claim new lands. They they often came into conflict. Um, you have these two kind of superpowers, the the Spanish and the Portuguese, that are really trying to, um, you know, really both trying to lay claim to, in some cases, the same parcels of land. And so um, in 1494, um, the Treaty of Tordesillas was drawn up. And this was an attempt to minimize the conflicts. It divided up the new territories. Um, it essentially divided up the world between Spain and Portugal. Um, now, you can probably see a couple of problems with that. Um, it, was, it was done under the auspices of the church. Um, but it did so really with, with no uh, clear regard for other nations that were also embarking on exploration. Um, England, France, Netherlands, um, they were all getting involved in um, exploration. But also, um, it didn't, um, it didn't uh, take into account the indigenous peoples that were living um, in these lands that were being, um, quote unquote, discovered. Um, so it, it took did not take into account the fact that there were already people living there in some cases, as we'll look at next week with, you know, uh, well-established civilizations and societies um, that were then upended by this age of exploration. Um, nevertheless, the age of exploration continued. Um, later Spanish explorers, including Amerigo Vespucci, proved that Columbus hadn't discovered a new route to Asia. They, they were able to, uh, to demonstrate that, in fact, he had discovered what they called a new world, 
again, it was already inhabited. It was not new, but um, it was new to them. Um, Balboa became the first Spanish explorer to reach the Pacific uh, from by, by sailing east to west. Um, so he reached the, the Pacific Ocean by crossing over the Isthmus of Panama. Um, and Magellan, a Portuguese explorer, uh, became the first to circumnavigate the globe. Although he died en route, it was his expedition that became the first to travel all the way around the world. Um, and it proved really lucrative, uh, but it also demonstrated that a trip like this was impractical. And so um, many European countries uh, turned their attention not to Asia, but to the, the Americas, uh, to, to, to the, the new world as a place where they might make gains. And of course, this is gonna have um, an enormous impact uh, in, in so many ways that we'll begin talking about next week. Um, again, there were other countries, not just Spain and Portugal that were involved, England, France, the Netherlands, they also get involved. They, they are mainly looking for a Northwest passage to the East. So, um, as opposed to, um, heading for parts South, they're, they're exploring Canada, they're exploring the, uh, the Northern part of, uh, the, the Americas, um, and establishing relationships with some of the indigenous peoples there. Uh, Jacques Cartier, uh, Samuel de Champlain, um, they, they managed to interact with, and in some cases even to sign treaties with some of these indigenous peoples. Um, so that's just a few thoughts about uh, the beginnings of the age of exploration. We'll continue this conversation next week as we begin to look at uh, sort of the encounter between uh, those living in the Americas, the indigenous peoples living in the Americas, um, and uh, explorers from Europe. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you all have a good week and a good weekend.